minutes to reflect on the stuff we've done the last couple of days. I have a question. Where the Josh? He did not even walking around and looking at people's answers to defining these laws. And it feels like you guys have gotten pretty good at that. And I know that you've gotten good from what I saw the last couple days at recognizing the difference between definite proportions, multiple proportions, or data that shows neither of those things. What the key that kind of connection we're trying to make today is what does that have to do with proof that atoms exist? How is Dalton able to use that evidence to prove for a fact that matter is made of atoms. And when I say prove for a fact, really what I mean is prove as a theory, because really he's just gathering more and more evidence to support this theory. So this starts with question three. This is the only one of the three I want to go over right now. Um, what are people's thoughts? So if Dalton had done these chemical reactions and found that neither definite nor multiple proportions stayed true, what might his conclusion have been in that case? Dylan, what do you think his conclusion was? I think that if none of the laws apply, then um, that means that atoms don't exist because, um, I mean, that any amount of any matter could be combined. So any amount of one can combine with any amount of other. Yeah, I agree. So the question is, what does the data tell us? And that's what we're going to do right now. Question? Comment? Yeah. Duh. Okay. Sure? Yeah. All right. Let's flip to page two. And yesterday, I got to meet John Dalton. Today, you get to meet John Dalton. And here's the idea. Um, 
two days ago, we did a little activity with the clay and with these molecule kits. And you showed that when you play around with the clay, you can get lots of different numbers. But when you play around with the molecule kit, you can only get certain things. I was going to ask you to stop building for a moment. You will have a chance. Today we're doing the opposite. So uh, Dalton did not have molecule kits, mainly because he didn't know about molecules at the time. Um, he also didn't have, well, maybe he did have, he probably did have clay. Um, mm -hmm. But imagine that you're Dalton, and what he had was evidence. He had chemical reactions that he and other scientists were doing, and he saw how much mass was being used of different elements in those reactions. So here's my challenge to you. Given this data set right here, I want you to see if you could figure out, first of all, the mass ratios, and then do you think it would be easier to recreate this with the molecule kits or with the clay? Then I want you to actually do it. So on the back, you can rewrite the mass ratios and draw what you have made. <coughs> if you make them with the molecule kits, note, and it says here on page two, every blue or black piece would be a carbon, and every green or white piece would be a hydrogen. If you decide to go with clay, just choose two different colors, and you can sort of describe what it is that you have made. So I'd like you to do this as a table. Come up with your ratios, decide how you want to try to recreate them, and then try to actually build what you think you're combining and making with either clay or with molecule kits. You can go ahead and get started. Ooh, so that's a good point. Right, because we don't know. Because we are being Dalton, and he didn't know that. So the first question we need to answer is, do you want to use the molecule kits or the clay to do that? I can't You're saying you use clay? I can't. You can't. OK. So let's use the molecule kits, OK? Um, so let's So let's try to figure that out. Imagine that this is going to be the simplest form. So this mass ratio is, oh, so it could be 12 to 1. Yeah, 16 to 1. OK, so if this is the simplest form, and you said the first one is 12 to 1, how could you get a ratio of 6 to 1 then with this? What would you have to double? So remember, these are carbons, and these are hydrogens. Which these are last ones? So they might help. Well, we can't cut things in half, but we can double something. So to double a ratio, so, if you, so A divided by B is your ratio. If I want to make half of that ratio, I can cut carbon. I can cut A in half, or I could do two B. Uh, triple. Using a clay. So this was a made up number. I like when you're thinking of this, but instead I actually want you to just make more assumptions. Okay. You don't have to use much of it, and the mod kits are like. Which one is what? Blue, black, carbon. One, one you have to use like a lot of pieces. Well, what if they weigh different amounts than the green ones? Like small pieces. Yeah. So what if? What if one? Blue or black piece weighs six times as much, twelve times as much, etc. You don't, you don't know for sure. You just have to make some assumptions. Dalton had to make some assumptions. So those assumptions are wrong. When I really, yeah, go ahead. So two, exactly. So now I say, so we start with, um, start with this. And you can guess that this one is. Now we're at oh, 6 to 1. Alright, we'll say it's 6 to 1. And if we add a little more, we'd be at 4 to 1. I don't know what we're doing. We add a little more, we'd be at 4 to 1. So, I can get this, but I don't want to get the hang of it. Wait, so let's, let's three, try it. So this is so the 4 plus 2, and it just weighs 12 times. Um, so I think, think can you name it? It's like when you write out the, if it's an 8. So now, 
This still weighs 12, so we're going to use this way. So that? Two. So what's the ratio? The four. So the ratio of that, I don't know how much Six to one. That's the ratio. There you go. Now, we're still doing these for the same mass ratios, but I want you to draw the different things. Can I ask you? Yes. Can I ask you a question? Can you cheat for me? Um, I want you to cheat in a certain way because um, you all are too smart in this class. I want you to try to do it with clay. I agree with you. The last class had some variation. I want you guys, no one's trying to play, so I want to see if you can do it with clay. Okay. You're doing it with clay? Oh, I take that. They're already doing it with clay. Okay, you're free to. So, so well, for if this were 12 to 1, you have 12 times as much, say, yellow clay as white clay. Okay. Now, I think you're on the right track. Okay, so let's figure this out. Um, Alex, Owen, now I'm going to try to answer both of these questions at once. So let's start with the simplest molecule. Let's, let's start. Are you, now, so first up, let's start with the simplest one, which would be one carbon and one hydrogen. Okay? So just essentially like this. Okay? So I'm just starting with just this. One carbon, one hydrogen. Let's assume for a moment that this is 12 to 1. So what does that mean about the mass of carbon versus the mass of hydrogen? How do they... Well, other way around, right? So it's that it's 12 times heavier because carbon. Because what, what we've shown is that the mass of carbon is 12 times heavier. So this would be 12 times heavier than this. From this, how could you get a ratio of six to one? You could get there. You go and see if you can keep figuring out from there. So what I'm saying to these guys was, yeah, so let's say that this is 12 to 1. So this is 12 times 10 over the next. How could you then get 6 to 1 with the same materials? That 2 what? 2 green. So you're on the right, so now you're on the right track. Well, you can't, you can't really name those. But uh, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. Oh. So then I'll name it like. Let's pause. So, here's what I'm going for in, in this activity. The question Dalton could have asked himself was, how would you explain this data? Would it be easier to explain by assuming that matter is made of tiny pieces where each element has their own tiny pieces? So we could call those atoms. Or is it easier to explain by just assuming matter is made of this kind of mushy stuff that can be combined and separated however you want in any amounts. So this would be sort of the non-atoms theory. So fortunately, we had some people who tried it both ways. And let's see if we can agree on which one better explains the data. Um, Alex, tell me about what you guys did and what you were able to figure out from the data. Um, so we figured out the ratios pretty quickly. Which are what? Uh, 12, 6, 4, and 3. 12, yeah. 6, 4, and 3. Yep. Yeah. Great. Um, and we used the molecule kits and we, uh, we used for every one carbon, so we started with just carbon and hydrogen, 
and that was 12 to 1, so that means that every single carbon, every carbon is 12 hydrogens, so. Good, so carbon weighs 12 times more than the hydrogen. And then when you add another green one, like this, then it divides the amount of the black by 2, the carbon by 2, so that it would be 6 to 1. Okay. Great. Like that. And then you could do it with 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. We didn't get to those yet. Okay, but. But we named the first one CH and the second one CH with little 2 on the bottom. Good, so CH, CH2. Do we feel like this is a pretty good job of explaining the data? Yeah. Any flaws that we see in this? Say that again? We don't worry about getting table two yet. But yes, we'll get to that in a moment. I feel like this explains the data. Well, you said you were confused? Yeah, how is it for So what they're saying, they had to make an assumption, and so did so did Dalton. We have to make a bunch of assumptions here. But his assumption was that atoms of a different element might weigh different amounts. So the assumption that I helped all the molecule groups make was, let's assume that the first one of these is just a C and an H. Then, for this one, this would be a C, which is 12, and two H's, which is 2. So what's 12 divided by 2? 6. 6. So you get a ratio of 6 to 1. Now we have a 12 and 3 H's, so 12 divided That's by 3. 4. So the point is, this explains the data really well. All right. Clay people, it's your turn. Tell me about what you did. Um, you did it wrong, but... Wait, I don't know that you did it wrong, but go ahead. Uh, I made like six, and six, twelve. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put this under here. So they made the, a slightly different assumption. They tried to make and so that this C was 12 times as big, and the number they gave was basically how many times more of it they had. I think that's a fair way to do things. Can you quickly make the, the, uh, the C12H that you made? It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay? So let's see. Because the goal here is to figure out what better explains the data. I want you to just estimate it for this. Here's where we're going to go with this. We're going to see if what they did better explains the data than what you guys did. If so, we may have to assume that the clay one works. But if not, then it seems like this explains the data pretty well. Is that 12? OK, great. So this is their molecule of CH. OK? This is C and H. That is not made of atoms. I don't see the H. This is the H. I don't see the H. Let's test it out. You say it's 12 times as much, right? Let's see. The C weighs. Wow. But do we feel like this 
assuming that matter is not made out of atoms, better